Hello friends, my name is AJ. The AP Computer Science exam is now one day away if you're watching it today or if you're watching it on exam day, it is just in a few hours. And this is gonna be the last video that I'm gonna be making before the actual AP Computer Science exam. So I just wanted to kind of put in in this video, it's a little bit less um, formal, but I just wanted to go over some of my final advice and kind of thoughts and also kind of to wrap everything up for your review and also just kind of wish you a good luck at the end. So without further ado, let's just get started. So the first thing is of course, one of my, um, one of the things that I stress uh, very a lot, especially in the last video if you watched it, is to make sure that you have gathered all of the materials that you need for the actual exam. And whether that be something like the Java quick reference guide right over here, which was in the last video, as well as making sure that your IDE is set up and having all of your notes ready, your files, and maybe using, you know, or making sure that your um, computer is all set up and ready for the exam. I think all that stuff is going to be very, very important just so that in it, this so that everything's ready to use and you have a lot of time if you need to kind of get everything set up and you know if there if you hit a snag somewhere you'll be able to fix it and it is generally reduces stress before the exams just something that i definitely recommend and now the second thing i want to talk about is actually you know going into the exam and taking the exam and the second point that i wanted to mention was about using your time wisely so I got in. I got a lot of comments. Um, there's a string of many, many comments in one of my previous videos, which a lot of people were talking about the timing, uh, because now you have this new part C to like some of the to question number one, where you kind of have this open-ended question, which is a possibility on the exam tomorrow. A lot of people were wondering, well, how does that factor in with the time? Because you know you were already working with kind of trying to solve the problem within already the short constraint of, you know, either 25 minutes for question one or 15 minutes for question two. And I think, again, the most important thing is the timing is not going to change, unfortunately. That's just how the timing is set up. And uh, kind of there, these are the structures for exams. You either have a 45 minute one question exam or a two question exam with a 25 minute question and a 15 minute question. That's kind of how it is standard now throughout all of the exams. So there won't be an exception made for AP Computer Science and this particular new this new type of question. I just recommend to make sure that you use your time wisely and just kind of being able to read the question. And if you read the question in like the first five minutes, then you'll be able to kind of, you know, know what the question is talking about and then maybe kind of formulate a plan of how you'd answer A and B. And then when you go on to C, just kind of, um, answer the question very concisely. You don't have to write too much. And I just recommend not stressing so much about that because, um, you know, again, the most important thing is that you're answering the questions uh, correctly and that you understand everything. And the timing, obviously, even if you're starting, you know, to run out of time, the, again, the most important thing though is to make sure that you actually submit uh, your question, right? Even if you're writing through question C and you've and you've reaching near the end of your 25 minutes and now it's time to submit and you're thinking, oh, you know, maybe I can just, maybe I can just go over by two minutes and kind of just answer the question then I can uh, submit really quickly. I don't recommend doing that, right? Just make sure that um, the actual, the AP, the AP people on the college board have said that it's actually possible to even get a five on AP exams by not even finishing the question. That was a tweet that they sent out. So I definitely recommend that just the most important thing is to submit your work. Submitting your work takes precedent even over answering that, uh, like fully answering that last question if it comes down to it, because you'd rather get your points for A and B and maybe not like all of your points for part C than not being able to submit at all. All of the work that you did is wasted and then you'll have to go and take the exam in June, which is definitely something that nobody wants to do. And that's, that's why I just recommend making sure that you submit your work and um, kind of just using your time uh, more wisely on this exam simply because there is not a lot of time so as long as you read your question, you answer your question, and then you kind of work on that part C and just try to answer what they are asking you to answer. You don't need to elaborate so much further, especially if you're on a time crunch. You just want to make sure that you hit all the points that they ask for. You know, they're not, again, going to grade on grammar. This isn't, you know, AP English. They're just, they want you to be able to answer the question 
obviously, you know, don't write it so unreadable that it's hard, that it's, you know, not proper even to read, but uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, your having amazing paragraphs and that type of thing, right? And again, the main focus is answering the prompt and answering the question. So definitely the points there are that you want to use your time wisely and then you also want to make sure that you submit your work. Now, another thing that I want to mention is during the exam and after the exam, make sure that you do not discuss the actual question itself or ask other people for help during the exam and uh, a good amount of time after the exam. Uh, if you don't, if you don't already know, there have been cases where, you know, your, your test may be for 50 minutes, right? So maybe four starts at 4 PM, uh, if you're on Eastern time and you, the exam itself is 45 to 50 minutes. But if you, there are certain, um, accessibility, um, exceptions given to certain people where they are given more time on the exam than what most people get. And the thing is, is if you start kind of sharing openly the question or the answers or kind of a discussion immediately after you finish your test, there may be somebody else who is who is inside of that. Uh, they have that accessibility time. And now it is um, it's still not allowed because, you know, there are some people who in, in the United States or elsewhere who may still be testing. So you want to uh, refrain from talking about these type of things until well after it is it is done, preferably when the FRQ is actually released because eventually they will release the FRQ like they have every year. I'm assuming that they're going to release it like they always do every year. They From 2019 all the way, I think, to 1999, they released the FRQs for um, AP Computer Science. And so even though, you know, the ones in 1999 aren't even relevant anymore because they were in C++ or something and not actually Java. But again, it's just very important that you do not discuss. And also going with that is don't try to send me anything either on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram about the question. First of all, I'm not going to answer you because um, I may be in an exam myself and also just generally um, that's not allowed, right? That's not that goes against academic integrity. You can uh, cannot help you on any exam and you, you definitely should know that. And um, just, you know, you're not going to, first of all, get a response, but also second, you do not want to, um, you do not want that information to go to the college board and then your scores will be canceled. You've already, you guys have already worked multiple months, so you don't want to, you want to avoid that as much as you can. So refrain from, you know, kind of talking to other people and trying to ask me questions because I will not respond to anything uh, if, especially if it's about the exam and during the time you're taking the exam. So pretty much I'm going to be off of everything from like answering questions relating to computer science, starting when the first exam tomorrow starts, which is going to be at 12 PM all the way until after the, the exam is well concluded. Um, I will be doing a video tomorrow. It may not be on computer science. It may be on something else like, um, iOS development, but still there. I will be from from the point of 12 p.m. onward, I won't be able to answer questions relating to the actual exam simply because the exam time period has started and, you know, it, it's just not, you don't want to, you don't want to ask questions to me or to anybody else relating to the actual exam. So that, that period of time, you won't be able to hear from me. If you have any questions though, of course, definitely leave them down below. This is the time we're one day before the exam and those questions will be answered by me. And some people who are already, you know, if they see it before me in the comment section, they may able, they may answer first and then I will be able to check and make sure that the answer they gave was correct. And uh, so that's what I recommend in terms of the not discussing. And then the last, last few things I want to talk about was you know, in case you, you know, a lot of people, they are worried, they have a little bit of stress, they want to study more. And I recommend that if you do want to study today, being the last day before the exam, I definitely recommend doing more practice type of questions. Do released FRQs. They have the scoring guidelines attached to the released FRQs, meaning you have the answer. So you can do it. Um, and remember, only do array list questions or array, you know, array, array list questions or method and control structures type of questions. Questions that ask you to write a class and two dimensional array questions will not be on the exam. So do not worry about those. Just focus on the two types of questions that will be on the exam. And you can look, you can check the answers that you have put, 
you know, or that you wrote down, you can check those answers against the scoring guidelines and see how you did. But I definitely recommend doing more practice instead of, you know, kind of trying to cram a bunch of material that you may not need to know in into that into that time you should spend most of your time uh, more it's more wise to use your time rather to do type of practice questions which allow you to apply stuff rather than for example uh, continuously rereading your notes because trust me you 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 understand you have been in this class for multiple months now you have um you may or may not have watched all of the in-depth review videos for each unit that i have in my channel and really the main focus now is just kind of getting familiar with the type of questions will be asked and doing those practice questions will definitely help you but also you know of course take it easy you don't want to you know spend 12 hours or something doing computer science review especially if you have other tests like i know tomorrow is also the ap united states history test so um you know in general just kind of space everything out and if you kind of, if you need to do and you want to do practice definitely do some of the released FRQs and there'll be a link uh, probably in the comment section below going that sends you to all of the previous released FRQs and the scoring guidelines are attached to you and these are released by the college board they're definitely very helpful to look at all right and now the last uh, the last two things i want to talk about is you know the exam is at 4 p.m. so you want to make sure that because lunch, depending on when you eat lunch, it may be a little bit earlier, especially if you have two exams. If you have AP United States History and then you have AP Computer Science, which is definitely a lot. But uh, you want to make sure that you that you are properly prepared in terms of the food department for the exam. I know that your teachers and pretty much everyone always tells you this, but you want to make sure that because your exam is at four, the best way in, or in order to focus is to make sure that you know everything is prepared you eat properly you sleep uh, you sleep properly then that will all help you because that helps your brain and able to output better results so if you need to even need a snack before the exam you definitely can remember there's 30 minutes uh but by the time that you log into the exam or at least you should log into your exam about 30 minutes before the uh, actual exam starts so during that time you can get those things taken care of and it will definitely help you in terms of not you know, not getting distracted and also your brain will be able to focus a little bit better. All right, then after the exam, uh, of course, I had said that I'll be releasing a video probably um, Friday, which is after the exam. It may not be on computer science. It may be on something else, but very soon I'm going to be continue or once they actually release these FRQs for 2020, I'm going to go over them. Once they are released by the college board officially, I will look over them. I will create a video that goes through the entire solution, what I thought about the thought about the type of questions. I took this exam in 2019, so I can maybe compare it to, you know, what what was on 2019 and kind of see how everything goes. And also, in addition to that, I know that, you know, we I stopped the in-depth reviews at Unit 7 up to now because Unit 7 is what will be tested on the exam. However, I will continue with Units 8, 2D, array, 2D arrays, Unit 9, Inheritance and Polymorphism, and Unit 10, which is Recursion. And especially those last two units, Inheritance, Polymorphism, and Recursion, those are the most difficult units in this course. So we will be going um, we'll be going over all of that very soon, especially if you have in-class tests for that. You know, even though it won't be uncovered on the AP exam, some people, uh, of course, depending on your state and how the um, how the virus and remote learning situation is going, uh, you may actually have a test. And if you do, for example, still continuously have tests, then those reviews will be very helpful for you. So definitely, even though this exam has concluded, I'm still going to be going over a lot of that AP Computer Science stuff, which will be very helpful for you. So definitely stay tuned for that. And then the last thing I just want to tell you all is good luck on tomorrow's exam. You have, again, prepared for multiple months. You will do really well. Believe in your own abilities. And, uh, you know, don't, don't stress too much in the sense that, you know, you, there, you may have two exams tomorrow or you may have this exam but just have uh, trust in your abilities as well as, um, you know, you've done a lot of practice, especially if you watch these videos, you probably don't practice in class. You are more prepared than you think for this exam. And again, as long as you read the question, you focus on using your time wisely and you submit your response, everything will be very good and you will do very well. And I look forward to hearing how everybody thought they did um, a little bit later after the exam and over the weekend. 
All right, everyone, if you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. As always, thanks for watching, and again, good luck. You guys will do very well.